Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar. Uh, thank you for being here. My name is Pablo. I have my colleagues, uh, Nicole and Nitu, who are going to uh, run the session today. I also have my colleague, Priscilla. Um, and I just want to welcome everyone. We're recording this session so that we can make it available to everyone um, right after. And I'm going to turn it over to Nitu. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Nitu Kaushik from Social Science Department. And, um, and uh, as uh, Pablo mentioned, that uh, we are presenting on this uh, topic, synchronous versus asynchronous. Uh, it took me a long time to you know, correctly pronounce it. It was hard. <laughs> <laughs> but I finally did. Uh, and uh, uh, our colleague Jennifer Arroyo from business department, she was actually uh, was going to present with me, but unfortunately, uh, she couldn't make it because uh, of unavoidable circumstances. Uh, but she did help me with the PowerPoint. And thank you so much for Nicole for helping at the last minute. And thank you for Pablo and Priscilla for being there to support. So it is like a teamwork and you all are also a part of the team. So thank you so much for joining and uh, listening to us. And please, um, at any time you have any other ideas and any additional information that you would like to add, please do so uh, because we all are <coughs> uh, and in this together. So we, we are going to share what we know and we want to learn from you as well. So thank you so much. So let's start. So first of all, what is synchronous learning? Synchronous learning means when the students are learning in real time, like live. So you uh, start like a web conferencing, which is, can also be called as online class, where you and students, uh, all of them, you know, join that meeting at the same time, like we are doing right now. Uh, so that can uh, have the video feature in it. You can just do the audio, like many of you might just be having the audio, not the video. And there is also a chat option. So simultaneously, what we are doing is there is also a chat going on. So what you are exactly are doing right now is what we mean by synchronous learning. So this is a great platform, you know, because uh, we can communicate directly um, in, at the same time. We have the question and answer, answer session availability. So if, uh, you know, you have any question, you can ask me uh and uh you know any feedback that you can provide uh you can also do so right away so in the situation of uh, instructor and the student uh the student can also ask the question just like they can in a real class uh they can do an online class through this synchronous learning so a lot of uh, benefits of synchronous learning that we have so uh now the point is that is it really necessary to do synchronous learning that is something you know i would like to bring to your attention mm -hmm. because uh, this situation is unusual because uh, the people who signed the student who signed up face to face uh, they should have a dedicated time in the class so it is possible to have synchronous uh, class uh, at that time when they sign up for their class but any other online class they don't have that specific time uh, so, for example, I teach a uh, fully online class, and in that fully online class, they don't have any dedicated time. For example, Monday, Tuesday from 10.30 uh, to 11.30, something like that. They don't have that kind of dedicated time. So, um, mo many online classes, fully online classes that are online right from the beginning, they don't have a dedicated time. That is more like a self-paced, uh, an element of self-paced in it. Uh, so, that is a li little different. So when somebody, uh, you know, start uh, thinking about teaching online, the first thought that comes in their mind is that, or you know, that they have to provide like a live lecture, uh, which is uh, which is a very great idea, very good idea. Uh, but uh, we can do so only in the situation when we can be assured that all the students are going to be available at that time. Uh, but to keep in mind, any online class which is online right from the beginning doesn't have that dedicated uh, class timings. But this situation is unusual, as I said, because here students did have uh, dedicated class timing. So we can arrange something like synchronous class here. So just that uh, unusual situation, you know, uh, is the synchronous document. Now, the tools for synchronous learning, uh, one is actual collaborate process, and 
they uh, give an excellent presentation, which is also recorded and made available to the college. Uh, that provides that, that platform. I was actually uh, just testing that myself. Uh, so if you want to use that, all you need to do is uh, you need to go to the Blackboard in the course tools. Uh, there is a tab called as Blackboard Collaborate. Just click on that uh, and you will be able to see uh, that you can you know, join the session. You don't even have to create the session. It is always there. Mm -hmm. So you can just you know, ask the student you know, uh, to come at the time when they have the class and join this class, join the session. And that way, you know, you can just have like a regular class, but it will be online. So that is how you can use the Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. You can also create a session. For example, if you would like to have a virtual office hour, uh, you can also do that through Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. <coughs> More information about that uh, specific tool uh, is already discussed in a separate webinar. The second uh, tool that we have is Zoom. So Zoom is what we are doing right now. As you can see that it is very user friendly. Uh, there are certain limitations. Uh, for example, I think it allows you like 40 minutes, but if you are the instructor right now, they have extended that to I think one hour. Um, so it is very user friendly. When you use the Zoom, you can share uh, the screen with your student. Uh, there is a whiteboard uh, feature, you know, where you can write. So for example, I have a pencil here, you know, if I want to write something, I can use a pen and you know mark this. You can also do the same thing in Blackboard Collaborate, and you can do the same thing in Side by Side. So all these, you know, three different uh, tools uh, that are available have almost the same feature. It depends upon you know, the user friendliness and how you know, you know which one do you like. Everybody can have different preferences. So uh, just to let you know, there are options uh, that you can use. Nicole, would you like to add anything in this? I actually just want to add a little technical component of today's um, uh, meeting. If you are a participant, could you please just hover over your picture and click the mute button unless you are asking a question because we're hearing everything that's going on inside everyone's home right now. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. Sure. And I, I also wanted to add, um, you know, Nitu is mentioning before that we have um, a, a different situation in that usually with online classes, there's no set day or time for, for students to meet. But since we've all had face to face classes this semester or hybrid classes, we do have a set day and time. Uh, but something that we need to consider is that even though we've had we have a set day and time, it doesn't mean that our students can actually log on at that time anymore. So we have students that are parents and have their children home um, and they're homeschooling them and they need the electronic devices at home right now. So we have family members that are competing right for laptops and such. So even though you know we do have, let's say a Tuesday 1030 meeting time, it does not mean that our students are able to do that right now because of the circumstances. Thank you, Nicole, for adding that. Sure. So going to our next slide, um, as um, you know, you know that synchronous uh, model is great. So we would like to uh, discuss about specific benefits that we have for this kind of model. So if you have a synchronous class, uh, if that is a possibility, then you know you have several benefits. One of the benefit that you have is there is immediate availability of question and answer. So for example. Uh, you are the instructor and there are students uh, and you are having, you know, uh, the kind of live class that we are having right now, like a live conference. So the student can ask questions, um, you know, instantly. They don't have to wait after the, you know, lecture is over. They can write, ask right away or they can wait until you are done uh, with your presentation. So uh, anything that you do in your actual class, you can do it here. Like some professors, they have the policy that student, you know, should be asking the question after the end of the lecture. Some professor allow them to ask right away in between the topics. So depending upon your preferences, all those options are also available in a live class synchronous model. So that is a great benefit of having this model. The second benefit is communication with fellow student. As you can see, there is a chat feature. So chat feature, student can also communicate with each other. Not only that, they can also talk to each other. So for example, uh, right now, uh, Pablo and Priscilla, you know, they are 
like a participant. So, for example, let's say you have students, you know, like that, and uh, we all are able to communicate with each other. I'm able to communicate with Pablo. I'm able to communicate with Priscilla. I'm able to communicate with Nicole, and they all can communicate with me. So, just like in like a regular class, you know, in an online class like this one, you can communicate with. As an instructor, you can communicate with your students, and student can communicate with their peers. So that is a very good function that you have in this model. Then um, there is also a possibility of presentations, like many professors, you know, uh, have uh, presentations in their class where they have individual present presentation where a student come in and make their presentation, or they divide them into groups, and the groups make the group presentation. So uh, in a live class, that is uh, that is a definitely a possibility. Uh, so you can, um, you know, ask the student, uh, for example, you can make the student as the host, like, you know, we switched a little bit, uh, uh, Pablo started with the host and then he made me the host. Uh, so we can switch. I can make one of you, uh, who, you know, who, who, whoever is joining right now, I can make you the host and you can be the presenter. So you can make, uh, you know, schedule those kind of presentation, just like you can do in a regular class. Uh, so that is a possibility. So don't be discouraged if you really like, you know, presentations in your classes, you can absolutely do that virtually. Then another benefit of this kind of model is that less isolation because we are able to communicate. We feel good, right? But in this situation, people are in home. They mm -hmm. are suggested not to go outside uh, to keep them safe and everybody safe, but it can quickly add to isolation. So if people can come live and, you know, even though they cannot meet, uh, you know, face to face, but even talking to them, you know, listening to their voice, to be able to communicate with them online, you know, that really uh, is a lot and reduces that social isolation or the social distancing that is causing a lot of anxiety, you know. So those things, you know, uh, can, can be addressed to a great extent. So that is something, you know, uh, that, uh, that kind of uh, benefit definitely you have in here. Then as I discussed before, you can also have virtual office hours, you know. Uh, now, when you had uh, regular, when the school was open, when you had regular classes, you had office hours, right? Now, what you might, might be thinking, now, how do I do my office hours? How do my student come in and ask for help? You can absolutely do that. As I discussed with you, within Blackboard, in Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, you can uh, schedule uh, office hours. Actually, you don't even have to schedule anything. You can just remain available in Blackboard Collaborate Ultra at that time, just join that class. And then uh, you, any student who come during that time will be able to talk to you. Uh, so those are the features. If you uh, are not very comfortable and uh, you know, you want to use some other uh, tools such as Zoom, you can also uh, have a, like a Zoom session. Uh, you can create a session and let the student know that uh, you, know, you will be available during those timings and these are the meeting timings if you want to talk to me. Or you can also schedule appointment depending upon the, uh, the student's need. So uh, those things can be done through these tools. Nicole, would you like to add anything? I would just add one more tool that um, LaGuardia IT worked very hard on, the C2C. So there's a chat um, availability there where um, I, I believe that students are put in a queue so that if two students or three students try to chat with you at once, there'll be a queue and they can wait their turn. But you can interact um, in real time with students and I think that's a great and secure way to have office hours with students as well. Thank you. Sure. So those are the benefits of synchronous model. So as you can see, it looks really great. And I'm going to go to the next slide. So just to caution, don't get scared because <laughs> there are some challenges, but I, I, I by all means, I'm not uh, discouraging you not to use this model, but just to let you know uh, so that you are prepared that there are challenges as well in this model. So let us discuss about those challenges. One of the challenges is that the student can uh, you know, uh, attend that live class only when they have computer access. Now, most of the classes that went online, most of them in our school, they were face to face. Now, students, you know, it is not necessary that they have the computer in home. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe if they do, maybe they are sharing with their family members. How about, you know, uh, two siblings are having the class at the same time, live class, and they have just one computer. So how they are going to do that? 
So that uh, problem is there because students, uh, you know, cannot go to a public library because of the same reason as they are unable to come to the school. They are unable to uh, use the school resources, you know. Uh, so in that situation, if they don't have their own individual computer, then they will not be able to attend that live class at the time you might have scheduled. The second thing is that even if they have computer, it is quite possible that their computer doesn't have the video ability or the audio ability. Maybe their computer is old. Like my desktop doesn't have uh, the video in it. It's old. I bought it in 2003. Although you can add, uh, you know, as an additional equipment, but, you know, students already are, uh, you know, having so many problems, uh, financial constraints, you know, to buy all those equipments at this time uh, in such a short time is can be hard then there can be technical issues because i had a student for example uh, you know said that she's unable to complete her assignment because her computer broke and there's nobody uh, where she can take to repair because everything is shutting down so uh, you know in those kind of situation also live classes kind of very difficult and there can also be internet issues Thankfully, you know, a lot of faculty, you know, they provided a lot of ways where people can get free internet, which is great. But we don't know what kind of internet service is that, if it is really good. Because for live classes like this, we really need very high speed internet. If that is not high speed, you know, they are going to have, have, have problems. So that, that uh, you know, what when I'm, I'm talking, the voice might be cutting. They cannot see it. You might, you know, get some kind of situations like that where you know you might hear professor i cannot hear you professor i cannot see you professor are you there i see a blank screen you know those kind of you know queries might come so just be prepared uh, it can be very distracting as well you know because you are trying to manage the technology you are trying to manage the class you are trying to manage the content you are trying to manage the student and when you uh, you know come across these kind of questions such as technical questions it can be hard on you as, as well so there can be possible disturbances because of that, because you also have to address, like, if the student has a problem, uh, you know, I mean, you cannot uh, help them right away, but you have to uh, somehow manage that to some extent. So that can be distracting as well. And there is lax a lack of flexibility, you know, the flexibility in the sense that, you know, uh, the student, they have to be there at that particular point of time. Although the argument is that, well, uh, they did sign up for that class so they are already blocked for that time period yes agreed but now the situation has changed you know uh, maybe some student you know they might have lost their job maybe they have to take care of their sick family members we don't know what they are going through so uh, in in the absence of you know that flexibility can make the life even more complicated for them so there, there are several limitations that you have in this synchronous model but again don't be discouraged to do that I would definitely keep as an optional and will not penalize the student for not being able to make this make, make this uh, you know live sessions i will definitely record it and make it available in the blackboard or you can send it through dropbox but uh, i will not penalize my students for not being able to make to this live class nico you would like to add Yes, I agree. And I think also we have to, as faculty, think about um, our own teaching preferences and what we're comfortable with. So a lot of the faculty that I spoke with in my department who were very new to um, distance learning and online teaching um, thought that automatically an online class means live videos. And it was making them very, very nervous because, you know, now you have something that's being, um, you know, you're not in a closed room, you're online, you're online and, you know, you're performing live and it just made people a little uncomfortable. And so, you know, Niku and I were discussing before this meeting that, you know, we wanted to kind of make sure that faculty understood it's not necessary. If it's something that you're comfortable with, if you prefer to teach this way without a script and go live um, and you want those benefits, then that's perfectly fine. But it's not something that you have to do. And, you know, if sometimes just knowing that you can edit and you can delete and you can redo is um, something that's very comforting to faculty, right? That you can kind of get it as perfect as, as, as you can before posting it to your classes. So just know that you don't have to take this model. Um, you, can, you can do it asynchronously, which we're gonna talk about soon. Thank you, Nicole. So now moving to our next model, which is just uh, the opposite of this model, which is called as asynchronous learning. So what is asynchronous learning? 
this learning does not occur at the same place and time it is more like a self paced kind of thing it can be done online or it can be done offline so these are you know the important characteristic of this kind of learning now take an example you know uh, such as uh, if you send email to your students you know that would be like asynchronous learning but if you are uh calling your student uh, uh and talking to them over the phone that will be synchronous because that is happening live right uh forget about the class just you know take the example you know from your own uh you know house like if you get a call from your family member you are talking to them and you are having the live conversation the, uh, the other person can ask you question you can answer to their question you can ask them question so two way communication happening right there but uh you know when you send uh, an email uh, the person is going to get the same information but first of all they are going to open that email whenever they get the chance and then they will reply or ask any follow up question that they might have at a later period so that is like little different uh but we cannot be available on the phone all the time so as you can see this is just like that you know talking over the phone or talking over the face time versus sending an email or sending you know so that is the difference between asynchronous and synchronous so asynchronous learning is the model where uh, the students don't have to be uh, present at that same place and time same place means uh, online and at that time now the tools that we have various tools now this is this list you know is just inclusive there are several other tools available that you can explore uh these are some of the examples that i'm uh, providing you uh so one of the tool that you have is screencast o matic this is a software that you can download on your computer so what this does is it will capture your screen so for example if you open the powerpoint on your computer and make it as a slide show so you can start recording your video that will also capture your screen that where the powerpoint is open so you can try that out uh and there i'm i'm sure they have video tutorials uh, that will walk you through the process how to record the video and how to capture the screen uh, so those kind of things uh, tutorials will definitely be there another way of doing it is uh, powerpoint voice over so if you have the powerpoint many of you already know must know that you can record your voice on uh, you know in there and that is another thing you can do uh, you can post your uh, you know Uh, videos on the youtube uh, you can also record your videos there uh, so that can be you know another source then you can have podcast social media that you can use you know for such kind of lectures now voice thread is another thing that can be done where the student can share their work with you and you can share your work with them then within blackboard you have black uh, blogs journals and wiki and then you can also have discussion board in the blackboard where you create a discussion forum every week actually i do that in my online classes that is the best thing i like in my online classes and i absolutely love it uh, um so what i do is every week i give them a discussion board and give them some question based on the content and as well as uh, ask them to give 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 some real world example so uh, they reply to my posting and then they also reply to each other so it gives them like a you know class environment uh but at the same time at their own pace they don't have to be there right there you know at the same time they can uh, reply whenever they get the time they don't have to be present at that time same time so uh, that is uh, the discussion board can be very helpful then emails and messages you know blackboard can be very complicated you know uh, at times if you want to learn the whole thing so you can also use emails to a great extent if you want to send something urgently you want to communicate with the, with your student i know the email storage capacity is limited but i heard that it is going to be increased soon uh and then you can also use the messages so all these tools that i'm showing you you can connect them through your blackboard so for example if you create a video using screencast matic voice thread uh, powerpoint voice over and anything on youtube all these things once you are done you can you can post that in your blackboard so everything remains available in one place so that student are not confused and you also can be organized you can post everything that you created using any of these tools you can have them in your blackboard 
and that is what I do. I have YouTube videos. I post my videos on the YouTube and then provide the links in Blackboard. So I have everything in my Blackboard. So Blackboard is a place where you can organize your course uh, and uh, you can create all these things, uh, all the videos, you know, discussion board, manage the discussion board, all these things at your own pace. Because as an instructor, it is also sometimes really good if you can do the things at your own pace, and especially at this time when, you know, everything is so, uh, you know, overwhelming and can be uh, stressful, you know, you can definitely enjoy that self-paced movement, you know, and do the work uh, when you're more comfortable and have the time because, you know, uh, schools are closed, there might be children in your home and they need your attention, you know, uh, and you might want to wait until, you know, they are, uh, they are sleeping or something, you know, you can then work, you know, so the, the self pace, you know, can be so beneficial in such cases, even from the instructor point of view. And the same thing from the student point of view, you know, because they are also dealing with similar problems and if you may, even more, uh, you know, so uh, that kind of learning environment can really be helpful for self pacing kind of thing. Nicole? Oh, yes. Oh. Sorry. Sorry, I just wanted to follow up with what Nitu said uh, because she's introducing a lot of possibilities for tools and a lot of these are really great for engaging students. But I also just wanted to just um, remind folks that in addition to maybe not being able to access things on a regular computer or digital device for whatever reason, um, and also some students have disabilities, so they may be accessing content through a screen reader, or maybe they can't hear, or maybe they're better at understanding written instructions. So I guess I would just say, try to think about options for your students. Um, don't necessarily assume that they'll be able to get the same level of access as each other. So whenever you can, please provide um, both text versions of whatever you're offering through kind of um, more high-end tools so that even if somebody can't access that in the same way, um, they still have access to the material so they are, they're able to learn as well. Right, and sometimes simpler is better. Yeah. Right, when it comes to students especially, because we have to keep in mind that these are not students who chose, for the most part, to be in an online class, right? They're being thrown into it in a way, um, yeah. just as we are. And so we have to be very sensitive to that and give them time also to explore these tools. So some practical advice is that we've had an instructional recess of a week where we have, you know, kind of gotten a chance to kind of work with these tools, but also just to wrap our heads around the fact that we're going to be teaching online. And I think we need to give our students a chance to wrap their heads around it too. So when we're back to instruction tomorrow, you know, I would highly suggest that if you are going to assign something for students to do, that maybe you either give just a few points attributed to that particular assignment or even make it ungraded for that first week because they are gonna be working out all the issues and problems on their end um, and we have to be sensitive to that. Also, I wanted to add that for discussion boards, um, they don't only have to be forums about class content. So in other words, it doesn't just have to be assignments that you put on discussion boards. You could be having conversations about course policy. It's a place where students can ask questions about the textbook or assignments, um, as opposed to emailing you these questions um, individually, because you will find that many students have the same question and you'll be emailed 14 times, right? So, and answering those emails 14 times. So it's better to have one place for each class where um, these questions, these general questions can be asked and you can answer them and everyone can access the answer to that question. And one of the policies that I do have with my online classes is that if it's a general question about the textbook or in an assignment or the class, it must be posted to discussion board. If they email me the question, I say post this to the discussion board mm -hmm. and I'll answer there. And I do say if it's a, a question that's private in nature, such as about a grade or about financial difficulty in purchasing the text, that needs to be emailed to me. That should not be posted in a public venue. Um, another thing about discussion boards, since so many of you, I think, are probably going to use discussion boards at some point, um, is that really be mindful um, that 
students really need guidance and they need clear instructions and parameters for their assignments. So, you know, just throwing a question up saying, you know, ask, asking students to answer a question, but not, not letting students know what you're expecting in terms of citations or interaction with other students or how long the response should be, you know, it, it, it makes students anxious and they will end up emailing you for this information. So have that information within, you know, built into the instructions, be as clear as possible and also be reasonable with your expectations in terms of the discussion board or any of the assignments online. You know, is this something that is manageable online? Is this something that um, is clear to the student? Uh, uh, you know, what, when we're, developing instructions, it may be very clear to us what we want from the student, but it's always good to have a second pair of eyes look at the assignment if possible so that they can see if there's something that's missing. And finally, I wanted to say also for all the tools that you're using this semester, so if you're making videos, if you're creating online assignments, please hold on to those, save those, because I use my online activities in my face-to-face -face classes as well. So if I do a PowerPoint with audio, um, I post it to the Blackboard of classes that are face-to-face -face and hybrid as well, because if someone's absent from my lecture, now they have a PowerPoint with audio, right? So it's not as good maybe as being face-to-face -face with me, but at least they have some of that lecture. So you yeah. can use these materials, all the work that you're putting into, all the time and energy that you're spending into making these materials for your classes can be used in the future. Thank you, Nico. Um, sure. I'm having a problem here. I don't know where these lines are coming from. <laughs> <laughs> Is somebody drawing on the PowerPoint? <laughs> Very interactive. <laughs> can I make you? Uh, I don't know. I um, can I make you the whole tablet, and we can erase this. I'm trying, but it's not working at my end. So. Let's see if I go to the next slide, it still shows it is not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know uh, what is the matter with this thing. Anybody have any idea how to erase these lines? It's like the whiteboards that don't erase this. <laughs> <laughs> At yeah. least it's not, it's not blocking much. So, That's true. <laughs> so this is the pen and these are the options, but I don't see eraser here. So be hidden. So, no. Anyways, uh, just to keep going, the benefits uh, um, already, um, so we discussed about the tools, right? So we discussed about the tools that we have for asynchronous learning. Now, uh, the next topic, we are going to talk about the benefits of asynchronous learning. What are the benefits? So as we discussed uh, in synchronous learning that there can be technical issues that can happen during the live session. Like I'm, I'm having this technical issue, right? I get <laughs> <laughs> so if I, if I were to address that right now, I will be wasting my time and your time, right? So uh -huh. we'll keep going. So these kinds of things, you know, like for example, can happen. Uh, so in the asynchronous learning, you are in control. So you are able to manage that at your own pace, own time. Uh, so you are not worried about, you know, addressing those right away. So because technology is, can also be complicated and to address the technology on the spot, especially if you're not the technical expert or from IT department, it can be really challenging at times. Uh, and I can tell that from my experience, I, I think I'm average in technology, but sometimes you know it can be challenging. For example, like this example, I, I have live examples right now. <laughs> <laughs> the second benefit of uh, this type of learning, as, as synchronous learning is flexibility and convenience, which is similar to what I just discussed with you. Uh, so you can prepare uh, your lectures, uh, you can prepare your videos, uh, you can prepare your assignments and anything at your own, own pace. And the same thing is also for the student. They can work at their own pace. When I'm saying own pace, I'm not suggesting that giving them like the whole semester. <laughs> like do it like weekly basis. Uh, but unlike like synchronous learning, they are not on the spot, you know. They have like the time. For example, when you give the homework to the student in a regular class, uh, you give them like few days, right, to work on it. The same thing, not only for the homework, the, all the learning material that you're providing them, such as video, let them give them some days to watch that video, like about the week and, uh, you know, process that, understand that, let them ask you questions during that time, because it takes some time. 
so during that time you know uh, you can give them like about a week and then based on that you, you can give them assignments so that is another benefit uh, that is there for asynchronous learning now the I next one is, i'm sorry i need to could i jump in right here with the flexibility yes please I'm so sorry uh, with with flexibility i think also that faculty really have to have a balance between flexibility and structure for the mm. class what need to was saying was that being flexible doesn't mean that you post everything online at the beginning of the semester and everything's due at the end of the semester because that's going to be very difficult for you as a faculty member in June when you have now four or five classes that you have to provide feedback and grades for for all the work of the semester but it's also unfair to the student. Um, online students oftentimes crave structure. When you don't have enough detail they look at you know they they they, they they email you and they try to find that structure. They want that guidance. And some of the students that are going to be in our online classes now, since they didn't choose to be there, um, they may not have great self-discipline. They might not be very good independent workers without you know, constant reminders and due dates. So if we continue to extend assignments for them and not have structure to the course, we might be thinking that we're doing them a favor, but we're not helping them to prioritize. We're not helping them to uh, develop a calendar for themselves themselves and, uh, and put aside a reasonable amount of time to do their assignments. So again, it's a balance between flexibility and structure in an online class. Let me actually, uh, you know, uh, I think one thing I can do is, because I'm sharing the screen with you all, what I can do is I can reopen this PowerPoint so that I don't get this annoying thing. <laughs> it's really bothering me. Uh, so I'm going to open this. Uh, also, if the person who who actually was did the uh, the drawing was testing out the marking tools on the screen, if you could look and see if you also have the eraser, so you might do it, right? You got it. I didn't do it. I, I I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, this is you know we're all figuring this out together, and exactly. Exactly. that's fine. Yeah. So now I thought it might be somebody else because you uh didn't have the eraser available but that was just an idea yeah so i'm going to uh yeah i didn't uh i mean it's okay as okay. i'm learning <laughs> we are we're all in it together just give me just one second uh now it is not showing that powerpoint okay right here so now you can see i'm going to go to this one Yay! That, that thing is gone. Can you see everybody? We can see your uh, PowerPoint. Uh, you might want to hit the share button at the bottom, uh, the green share button, and then make sure that when you have the pop-up window, you choose the PowerPoint and then hit share. Yeah, I think we're in a different, we're uh, seeing it. But, okay, new share. So now I do this, right? Uh, yeah, go, in, go into the share button at the bottom. There you go. Now oh, we now can we see are. the slide. Yep. There you yeah. go. So we don't have that pen. And we don't have the mark. And Yay, me too. See, she's a great troubleshooter. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start. Uh, so, pre uh, so we already did this. So I'm going to go to the slide that we were in there. So these things we already discussed. Uh, so yeah, so I was discussing about the cost effectiveness next. So when you are using the asynchronous model, then it is also cost effective because you know that uh, from the student point of view, uh, they need to have like high speed internet uh, to be able to attend the live classes. They need to have like a, uh, you know, advanced computer with audio and video. Uh, if not, uh, or if not video, definitely they need audio. So, you know, those things can quickly become expensive for them. So definitely cannot be cost effective in many cases. Uh, so that is another thing. And also, um, if you were to prepare videos, um, you know, offline, then you can also edit them, you know, which is, uh, which is not an option, you know, in the case of live classes. For example, whatever we just did, all those lines and all that, you know, whole thing is being captured in the recording. It's not going to go, maybe we can edit, later, but the live, we cannot. So the thing is that you have a lot of control when you are preparing your lectures um, in, according to the asynchronous model. And uh, there is uh, more about, you know, learner control because there is more of a self-paced uh, so they can, uh, you know, 
maybe you know go through like uh, 10 minutes lecture and then they can come back and complete the remaining and they can go back again and listen to it so those things can be done so they, that is like uh, students will have more like a control more learner control and i already discuss about the the best advantage is self pacing so students and including the instructor they can uh, have their own pace uh, but I'm not saying that, uh, you know, give them, uh, you know, all the semester, but, you know, some kind of pacing, like every week, you know, or so. But the more flexible we can be during this time is uh, actually a good idea for the students. So they will really appreciate that. Anything else? Anybody would like to add? Um, I wanted to just also add, um, you know, with asynchronous learning, also the faculty member needs to commit to a schedule as well. So if you have let's say a Tuesday due date for students, you know, make sure that you're grading in a reasonable amount of time, um, that you're posting instructions and assignments um, you know, weekly, that you're not lagging behind because you're the model for students, particularly in an asynchronous class, right? So if you are very organized and committed to the class and, and checking in with the students, they are much more likely to do the same, right? And to treat the, the class with the same amount of respect. Um, also, in terms of attendance, I saw that earlier someone had put a question about attendance. So I personally follow in my online classes um, the policy on verification of enrollment. So what it says about online classes for VOE mm -hmm. is that if a student logs into Blackboard, that's not sufficient. That doesn't count as attendance. Oh. Right. And so when students ask me, well, I logged in, you can see my last login date was, you know, so and so day. I say, well, that's the equivalent of going into a classroom, peeking your head in and walking out. Right. You're not going to be marked <laughs> present for that. So, you know, for VOE standards, you have to submit something. It doesn't have to be a passing you know, assignment. It doesn't have to be a complete assignment. But once you you um, you know, once you submitted something that counts as attendance. Even if it's just one out of the three assignments due that week, you are marked present. Or if they email you, that's another standard for VOE. If they email you and they contact you, that's considered, you know, a class-related activity. Um, you can mark them a present for that as well. Oh, thank you, Nicole. That's so helpful sure. to know. So going to the next slide, um, you know, asynchronous learning also is, uh, you know, not out of any limitation. It does have limitations. Another limitation is that, you know, uh, more learner control can also be like a disadvantage because we do want uh, the students, you know, to have like a, you know, self-discipline uh, because uh, we cannot give them unlimited time, you know, to complete their work. Otherwise, you know, it will keep piling up and it will never get finished, right? So we need to have that kind of, you know, set up. Uh, so that uh, sometimes, you know, student can take too easy or maybe, you know, uh, just delay and think that they will do later and it ne ne never gets done. But when they're in the class, you know, they are able to listen to you and uh, learn right there. But you cannot have that kind of, you know, uh, control, you know, or situation uh, because students, you know, they are not in a regular class. Uh, they are given their own pace. So sometimes because of that flexibility, uh, they might not uh, actually, you know, might be that self-discipline. Because in any online class, self-discipline is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Unless and until the student is self-disciplined and also self-motivating, those are the very important elements. Actually, I post like best practices, you know, uh, for an online class for the students uh, that does uh, talks a lot about uh, motivation, self-motivation, self-discipline, dedicated study hours, you know, uh, and making sure to mark their calendars, uh, have a deadline set for everything. So those are the things they have to set uh, at their own pace uh, and make sure they are not, uh, you know, uh, falling behind. They are completing on time. They are not, uh, you know, piling up their work. Uh, because you might have noticed that many times, even though you give them like, you know, one week to complete their work, even in a regular class, you know, there are students who wait till the last minute to complete their work. So, you know, those kind of situation can arise more in an online class. So it is very important, you know, uh, to use various tools to keep them, you know, motivated and keep reminding them to complete their work. So you cannot remind them enough in an online class. So for example, I send the same information to them through different modes, like announcements, sending email, 
you know, so those are the things that I do. I send mass email to the whole class. I send individual emails to the students, you know, who are missing their work, reminding them, you know, sometimes you give extension to them. So these are the elements, you know, that are there. Then another uh, limitations of asynchronous learning is uh, lack of instant feedback. So for example, uh, if, some, if you know, there is a student uh, ask me a question in the live class, uh, I will be able to answer to them right away. But in the case of asynchronous learning, that is not a possibility because I mean, they can still ask me, but then they will have to wait uh, until I see and reply to them. Mm -hmm. But it is still okay because it's not like that you are going to take forever. Sometimes, you know, you will also appreciate time to uh, reply uh, you, uh, because uh, maybe you can provide them even a better feedback when you get some more time. You can uh, refer them through important resources, right? So in the instant feedback is fine, but at the same time, uh, giving feedback at your own pace has also its own benefits. But so this, uh, you know, is like pros and cons both. So these are the limitations. Uh, maybe there are more. Uh, but uh, these are the mo it's most important uh, that we came up with. Anything else you would like to add, Nicole? Um, in terms of the lack of instant feedback, um, for things that are not specifically content related, but also sometimes content related, if there are questions that are posted to the discussion board, I do encourage students to answer each other as well. Right, so normally I tell students that it could be up to 24 hours before I respond to a discussion board question, particularly if you email me on a Friday, I might not get back to you immediately. Um, but I encourage students by offering extra credit here and there. If you answer a, a classmate's question correctly before I do, you have the opportunity to earn extra credit. And I find that that is great for building community, right? And also for just putting trust in the students as well um, and showing, that that, showing them that they're in charge of the learning as well. And they can, mm -hmm. they can help each other, that I'm not just the only person um, that could provide answers within the classroom. Thank you. So after discussing uh, both the pros and the cons of both the synchronous as well as asynchronous learning, now the final part is that what are the best practices, which is good and which is, you know, not so good. That is nothing like that. Actually, both are good. Both have, as we discussed, both have their pros and cons. So the suggestion would be uh, to use a combination of both. Uh, be, uh, you know, it is uh, recommended to be flexible because of the so many limitations our students are face facing, especially at this moment. Uh, so not to penalize the student if they cannot attend the live class and have, have it recorded. For example, this session is being recorded and Pablo will make it available at a later, maybe by evening or tomorrow. So, you know, you, you can make that available. One hour, less than an hour. Yes, so that will be made available. You can do the same whenever you are doing the Zoom session or in Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, WebEx, in all these different, you know, synchronous uh, models, you know, tools, you can always record whatever lecture you are giving to the class live and the students who are unable to attend uh, can, you know, watch that, watch those lectures later, like in a, uh, a synchronous way. So you can use a combination of both. Uh, definitely synchronous, you know, can add uh, and is a complement uh, for your asynchronous learning. So I would use a combination of both depending upon your need, availability and resources. And also, you know, to keep in mind about the needs of the student, uh, because as I discussed with before, you know, students might be sharing the computer. So it is quite possible that the students might not have, uh, you know, the computer availability at the time when you are holding that live class. So just be mindful about that. And uh, also the resources available, you know, maybe they might not have internet, maybe they don't have audio and video features, you know, uh, so they ha they are struggling with that. Even many faculties, you know, uh, you know, they might have that kind of situation. Uh, and then flexibility approach is the best, you know, uh, maybe providing the same material, not just with video, as Priscilla mentioned, you know, what I do is, uh, other than providing the videos, I also provide them PowerPoint, uh, almost the same information. I also post, you know, in a Word file. I also post like, mm -hmm. you know, like a student handout. I try to post the same information in different ways uh, that is good for the visual learners, you know, uh, the people who would like to watch the video and the people who would just like to read, you know, because we have a diverse student population with different needs and different situations, different capabilities. 
and because of that reason you know a flexibility approach uh, can really work uh, good for our students and then you know also have like more options even for assessment purposes uh, so um, you know uh, that, like you know just like the way you give a uh, combination of you know written papers quizzes uh, presentation you know the same thing you can you can do using these models synchronous and asynchronous uh, for assessment purpose also and providing the learning materials also Nico? Um, so one thing I would add um, that if there's going to be any synchronous element to the class so if there is a day that you are going to require students to log in let's say it's for testing or for it's for a presentation or for a meeting uh, please try to make that clear to students as early on in the semester as possible. So ideally, if this were a regular semester and you were teaching an online class, I would put that in the promotional materials that you use. So if you have signage on your door or flyers you're giving out to students, you know, this is an online class with the following mandatory meeting date online. Um, or in your email to students right before the semester begins like welcome to the course this is the textbook we'll be using also you will have to have this date you know in your calendar to, in order to you know to to keep that day free for some sort of online meeting um now we since we're starting a few weeks into the semester um, i would say if you are going to have a synchronous element this semester please let students know right away so that they can you know hold that date and also if it's in an impossibility for them they may need to unfortunately drop the course but you know hopefully that's not going to be the case but they should know earlier than later to be fair to them pablo i have made you the host now hello yes thank you I have made you the host because we are almost at the end uh, for the question and answer. Uh, before we move to that, just uh, just to quickly uh, summarize, uh, both models are great, both have their pros and cons, but given the current situation that our students were not necessarily ready for taking the online class, a flexible approach is good. So if uh, in an online class, which is uh, online right from the beginning, the way many professors work is that they apply uh, a synchronous model but use synchronous model as a complementary approach, uh, but not necessarily making it compulsory. So that is uh, one of the final inputs I would like to add. Nicole, any final input? No, that's it. You did such a great job covering this. You and Jenny with the, uh, with the PowerPoints. Thank you so much for that. You did great. You added such a good uh, you know, points there. Thank you so much. Sure. Anybody else would like to add anything other than what we said? because we know that we have a lot of uh, uh, experts and I know you all have so much information. So please feel free to share. You can unmute you, uh, and please share. Yeah, you're welcome to unmute your microphone and just ask a question. Yes, please. Not only question, even if you have something to share that you know we didn't discuss, please, uh, I would appreciate it. So uh, I have one question. Uh, I am uh, teaching a class on Saturdays and uh, we met one time obviously last week and now we're going to uh, transition to distance learning. What are your input in terms of um, like engaging the students, especially those who may necessarily not speak up during class, those who are shy, who may um, not necessarily uh, participate actively? Um, what are your, your suggestions for sort of like making sure that everyone is as engaged um, as possible? Discussion board is a great way on um, Blackboard to make sure that students are contributing to the conversation, sharing examples from their own experiences or citing what they've read in the text. Um, you know, for discussion for my particular classes, I make it a mandatory component of the okay. class so that, you know, there are points attributed to the discussions to make okay. sure that they are doing the reading, to make sure that, again, that they are engaged with the coursework, particularly okay. since, um, you know, we're not having live conversations in my classes, the discussion mm -hmm. board becomes very helpful in that regard. Cool, thank you. Any other questions? Any other information that you would like to share? Questions about attendance? Tips <laughs> for other people? <laughs> Concerns? 
uh, some people may have mentioned this, but at least I've heard this question in other in other sessions. Uh, has anybody had um, experience using or engaging students via the Blackboard app on their phones for those who do not have a computer? Uh, and if so, what was that experience like? I do want to say that students in my class who had who've used the Blackboard app on the phone have told me that unfortunately not all of the um, the links in the menu are showing up for them. So that's something to be mindful for, uh, mindful of. So Wait, I'm sorry, could you say that again, Nicole? Sure. So students have told me that when they use mobile, when they use the uh, app, yeah. app, they don't see the complete menu. So one of the kind of links that I have on the side is weekly assignments. And when they mm -hmm. click on that, they'll see, you know, a list of all the things they're supposed to do for the week. And I was wondering why students were saying, what do we have to do this week? What do we have to do this week? And I kept on telling them, refer to weekly assignments and then uh, you know finally they told me it's because they were looking on their cell phone okay. so i told them you know at least once a week if possible go on a tablet or go on a you know laptop or desktop just to check what's due for the for the week and then you can engage on the app from that yeah. point on yeah that's yeah. very helpful to know, especially for faculty who may know or faculty who may very well be concerned that not all, all students are going to have access to a computer. Right. Um, I was able to, the other day I was doing some testing and I was able to join a session via Blackboard from my phone, uh, from Blackboard Collaborate, uh, and it worked pretty well. Um, so uh, it was a good test, uh, but definitely it's mindful to know about what, what are the limitations, especially if... And I guess it would also be helpful to survey students. How are you accessing this content on a weekly basis? Are you using a desktop, a laptop, a phone? And that way, that could, the, the teaching, the distribution of that material could be adjusted accordingly. I think that's a great idea, Pablo. Ask your students when you're checking in with them very soon, starting tomorrow probably, how will they access the mm -hmm. course materials? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some, some tools are a lot less you, uh, phone friendly than others. Yeah. Jen is here. Jen, are you here? If you would like to add something, we miss you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jen is here. I see Jen here. I'm, I hope. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jen. She did a good job. Maybe she had to go. Yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, that's pretty much right. Um, yeah. yeah. So thank you, everybody. Any questions? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to uh, Jen. Thank you to Nitu. Thank you to Nicole for the, the stepping up so quickly. Thank you. Uh, thank you all. Once again, we're going to be, um, uh, we have been recording this and we're going to make it available uh, in the next hour or two and uh, share with everyone who didn't have a chance to uh, join the session, but also if you want to rewatch this and, you know, uh, review the conversation as well. All right. Any other final uh, points, Priscilla, Nitu, or Nicole, or Jen? All good. Thank you all. Yeah, just want to good. say that, you know, just do the best you can, uh, you know, just be kind to yourself also, you know, because you're also, you know, might be doing this for the first time, so it can be overwhelming. So just do the best you can. Uh, just prepare week by week rather than preparing the whole course at one point. Just think like what you're going to do tomorrow. Don't, you know, worry about, uh, you know, what is going to be happening next week or something. Because, you know, that can quickly become over overwhelming. So that is one suggestion I would like to give. And, uh, you know, just know what is best for your class. What is, you know, the thing that is working for you and your students. Just do, there is no, like, the ideal approach. It depends upon what you like to do and uh, what your course is about and, uh, the way that you prefer in your classes. So it totally depends, you know, and everybody, you know, can have different point of view and different likes and dislikes. So there is no uh, ideal approach. And as we discussed, both have pros and cons. And if you have any question about these two models, and if you need any other help about uh, uh, developing, uh, you know, your teaching style according to these models, so just let us know. We will be able to help you the best we can. Uh, so that is all I want to uh, say. Thank you so much for giving your time and listening to us. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. everyone. Be safe and we'll stay in touch. All right. Bye. Goodbye, everybody. Okay.